Hello, my name is Peter Thorpe. I'm one of the consultant radiologists at Aberdeen Royal Infirmary. And I'm here to tell you something about some of the tests you might be referred for during your stay at the hospital. The radiology department is here really to assist your surgeon in the diagnosis and treatment of your kidney and bladder disorders. Some of the most common tests that you may be coming down to us for include ultrasound, plain x-rays of the kidneys and bladder called an IVU, CAT scanning, MRI scanning and nuclear medicine. Ultrasound uses high frequency sound to examine the solid organs within the abdomen. It's a test that's usually performed either by a doctor or a specially trained radiographer called an ultrasonographer. The test is very straightforward and involves spreading some jelly over the surface of your skin and rubbing a smooth probe over the abdomen uh, to generate pictures that can then be interpreted. An IVU or intravenous urogram is a plain x-ray of the kidneys and bladder. As these structures don't show very clearly on ordinary x-rays, it's necessary for us to give you an injection of some dye that shows the kidneys and the bladder up more clearly. Interventional radiology is the specialty of using keyhole treatment or surgery under ultrasound or x-ray guidance to treat or investigate your kidneys and bladder. The most common procedures involving urology patients include renal biopsy, which is the procedure of taking a tiny sliver of, of the kidney using a specially designed needle with a local anaesthetic and a little sedation. This is usually done with ultrasound to guide the operator. CAT or computerized tomography scanning also uses radiation and may use the same dye as we've talked about previously. On this test, you'll be asked to lie on a mobile bed that will then slide through a ring of X-ray cameras which take pictures as, you, as, as the bed moves. Because we're taking pictures from many different angles of the body, the, a computer can then reconstruct uh, slices of the body from head to toe. This gives us far more information on the kidneys and other organs within the abdomen and on the bladder and prostate. Magnetic resonance imaging or MRI doesn't use x-rays but depends on the presence of a very strong magnetic field again to create slices of the body so that the organs can be examined in detail. It provides slightly different information to that that we get from a CT scan, so you may find that you're referred for both investigations. Although the dangers of radiation are completely removed when, uh, with an MRI scan, there are dangers from the strong magnetic field. And it's particularly important if you have any implanted electronic devices, such as pacemakers or bladder stimulators, that you tell the doctor about these if he's considering an MRI scan. Also important are any metallic objects that are in your body, be it from operations, accidents, or from your work. And we get particularly concerned about welders or construction workers who may have metallic fragments within their eyes. Again, if any of this is relevant to you, then you must tell the radiographer before the scan starts. The MRI scanner, again, is a ring structure that a bed moves through, but it is more enclosed than a CT scanner and some patients have problems with claustrophobia. If you know you suffer from claustrophobia, then it's possible to look at the equipment before your scan if you contact the MRI department. And if necessary, we can arrange for you to have some sedation while you're having your scan. During your MRI scan, which takes longer than a CT scan, typically 20 to 30 minutes, as opposed to a matter of seconds, you may be given an injection of some dye. This is different from the dye given in, in uh, plain x-rays and in CT scanning and doesn't involve iodine. Nuclear medicine 
is used most frequently to look at the bones and the kidneys. These tests give your doctor specific information about how these structures are functioning. The tests involve an injection of low-level radioactive material that passes through to either the kidneys or the bones and then you sit or stand next to a camera which collects information used to construct the pictures. and then it will move you back in every two and a half minutes. So this is an overview of the more common procedures that are involved in imaging and ARI. Obviously your procedures may be slightly different to those that I've outlined. But the radiographers and radiologists in the department are aware that this is a difficult time for you and will be happy to answer any questions or concerns that you may have at the time. The hospital has produced a set of information leaflets covering all the imaging modalities at ARI and you should ask for a copy of the appropriate leaflet before you come down to the department.